Okay, so today we have a game most of y'all wouldn't expect or even remember, but today we're talking about Tomb Raider 2013, which is the original of the rebooted trilogy. And you know to say, this game was free on Steam a couple of days ago. I'm not exactly sure if it still is, but it was free on Steam, decided to pick it up, put some time into it because I have nothing better to do with my time. And you know to say, there will be a review on it coming out later. But to start this off, there will not be any major spoilers in this video. I will not be judging too harshly on the graphics since, of course, it's a 7 year old game and you can't really compare 2013 graphics to 2020, but we'll get into that later. So, first things first is the characters in this game. So, you of course have Laura Croft, who's the protagonist that you will be playing as throughout the entirety of the game. Then you have the rest of this crew that you're with, which consists of Alex, who's this electronic specialist, or just the guy that fixes stuff around the ship. Then you have Dr. Whitman, who is a celebrity that is, he's, he has this reality TV show that we'll get into a little bit later, but it's basically about as much as you need to know about him right now. Then you have Rise, who's his mother on this trip, who is very skeptical about the whole thing and has made very clear throughout the game that she's not vibing out with y'all. But after that, you have Roth, who's a close friend to the Croft family, who plays a pretty important role to the lore of this game that you could find later in the game. It goes over it a little bit, but yeah. Then you have Sam, who is Laura's college friend. Then you have Grim, who is just this guy that's, just, I would say, the least developed out of all of them. He's very forgettable. But then, last but not least, you have Jonah, who is in every other game after this one. So, he's pretty important. You should probably pay attention to him. But yeah, after knowing these characters, you now have the story. And this story is basically Laura takes her first adventure to Yamata, which I think is how you say it, which is an island in the Dragon's Tail off the coast of Japan. Which is a real place by the way, but Croft and her friend Sam go on this adventure to Yamata to find this lost kingdom with Dr. Whitman on his reality TV show, and he's pretty desperate after this, he's just, uh, kind of doing his show, trying to make, make the most of it, so that's kind of how she got it, but throughout the game, you'll learn about the history of the island and the sun queen of this island, or Himiko, which again, real thing by the way, you can look it up, but you go throughout the entire island trying to find a way to leave, as there's this a force that prevents you from leaving that I'm not gonna get into because obviously it's a pretty big spoiler but there's this thing this incredible uh, spiritual thing but I'll just leave it at that and obviously there's a little more into it but it's really just kind of like that simple you're on the silent you're trying to leave okay pretty simple so keep it there without spoiling anything now gameplay wise the combat really does work well in this game which was surprising but the thing that works equally as well with the combat is the platforming, which was something I wasn't expecting. And something I also really enjoy is that they didn't overuse any of this. I feel like they separated it in a perfect way so you aren't doing too much combat and you're not doing too much platforming. And it's just, it, they, they did it perfectly so you don't get overwhelmed and get bored of it. So, good on them for spreading it out like that. I like how it's like, very, like, sected areas I guess I'm not sure what you would say but yeah I like how they did that and another thing that I absolutely love in this game are the puzzles which is kind of what Tomb Raider is built on in a way but the puzzles in this game will make you feel absolutely stupid for a hot minute and once you figure it out it will make you feel like you should automatically be accepted to Harvard because it was this wow oh my god I completed this puzzle which was stupidly hard it's actually crazy how complex some of these puzzles can get so major shout out to the puzzle makers that made these absolutely incredible on them you know that also includes puzzles from just trying to find your way through the island to raiding tombs see what i did there tomb raider raiding tomb okay anyway one last thing i love about this game is the stupid amount of details that they have this ranges from the details and the graphics despite how limited they are to the time of this release because graphics again 2013 but other from that you can just find stuff throughout this entire game with stupidly small details one thing that i truly love is that her, laura croft's clothes you can slowly see start to like deteriorate they slowly get more worn out with how you progress through the game it's just really small details and stuff that happens to her early in the game is still there at the very end so a lot of stupidly tiny details then another thing I truly like is the artifacts you can find throughout the island, which is just like, uh, there are artifacts, you can just find them, it's kind of like a crown or something, you just find it. But it gives you insight of the people that have been to the island, this ranges from Portuguese traders to World War II Japanese military projects to just 
US Marines, it's just, the stupid amount of attention they put into this game is absurd. But, with all that comes some stuff I don't like. Now, surprisingly, there's not anything bad in this game that I can forgive. All of them are pretty... Did I just say forgive? I mean, there's nothing I, I can forgive all of them, okay? The main thing I really don't like is the length of the story, which I finished in about 8 hours, including exploring with that. I just feel like they could have made it a little bit longer, but I can let that one slide because it's the first one with the reboot the trilogy and they didn't really know how this game was going to work out, but that's there. Then something I feel like they could have done better is the exploring, which the exploring here is definitely more linear versus other games like Fallen Order where it just kind of throws you in says, all right, do whatever you want at your own pace. Exploring in Tomb Raider 2013 is a little bit more linear. You're kind of like, it's very open. You could do it, but you're kind of like set in this one small area, I guess. Like you have this one place where you're like, okay, you could explore this, but nowhere else without progressing the story. So it's weird, but it's, it's a something I don't like too much. Then the last thing I don't like is how you go from this person that is obviously scared because you're now on this island by yourself and you take your first body right and you're absolutely terrified right like as you would be you're just like i just took my first body but then like two minutes later you're taking bodies left and right i feel like they could have eased that in more to get more into the kill or be killed type of vibe it's just i feel like they could have done it better like give you an option like okay do i do this secretly and not take any bodies or do i just go guns blazing so I can forget that one because of course it's a game it's not supposed to be like that but i feel like if they just ease into that better it would have added much more character development but overall a lot of stuff that i could just forgive so it's really the main bad things that i could say about the game other from that there's just like small glitches but none of them are game breaking so i can't really hate on them again it's 2013 it's just hardware limitation but yeah overall this game is spectacular and way too fun to play which is something i was not expecting it's just something you wouldn't expect from a game like this to be this fun. And, you know, even if you don't know too much history, you can still find this fun and learn a lot, which is kind of weird because, of course, you're not playing a game to learn stuff, but you'll learn stuff just by playing this game and you'll have fun while doing it. You know, if you're in quarantine, which you should be, and you have nothing better to do, you might as well pick up this game. So, yes, this game is definitely worth it. Even if the daily quality shows, it's just overall a great game. And I will be doing, of course, a review on it, which will go fully in depth later. But other from that, this game is absolutely spectacular. There's just no reason you shouldn't get it. It has a pretty good story that's fun to get involved into. The history is fun. The game's fun. The mechanics are fun. It's just overall a fun, well-rounded game. And it's not too long, so you won't be taking up all of your time in it. So yeah. Is it worth it? Yes, again, you should get this game. But other from that, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, I will see you later.